Okay, so for today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about multiple turtles and for loops. And you're welcome to look through the textbook here. I'm going to come back to it in a bit to have you try some mixed up problems. But for now, I'm going to open up Thonny and we're going to work through this together in Thonny. So make yourself a new file. And every time that we want to use turtles, we're always going to start with the exact same thing. We're always going to start by importing turtle. So again, we're looking for the turtle module. So that's a file called turtle.py, which means that you can save this as anything except turtle. So when you save your file, again, do that. And I'll call this one 20 more turtles or something. Just so long as you don't save it turtle, everything should work. Okay, so you can test it if you want and just hit run and nothing should pop up. So as per usual, the first thing we need to think about is how do we create a screen upon which to draw? So I'm going to say screen equals turtle dot screen. And notice here, actually, maybe I'll call that something different so that it doesn't confuse you. I'm going to call it window. Uh, so this variable could be any uh, any word. It doesn't matter what we call it. But what we're doing is we're looking inside the turtle module that we just imported and we're running a function called screen. Notice the capital S and the fact that I'm using two brackets here to say I want to run that function. So if you do that and you hit run, now what should happen is that your code is going to pop up a window, a Python turtle graphics window like this. Okay. Again, as we've done other times, we're going to then also create a turtle that we're going to draw with. So I'm going to say Robin equals turtle dot turtle. Notice again, we go inside the turtle module, then the dot, and we run the turtle function with a capital T and we use the brackets at the end of it. So if we do that, now what you're going to see is there's this little arrow there and that's Robin. So let's just set a few properties here before we go further. So I'm going to say window.bg color is set to blue. And let's make Robin.color to be red. And let's also make Robin look like a turtle. So I'm going to do that by going Robin.shape and passing in the string turtle. So if we run that, now what you're going to see is this blue background with a red turtle. Great. So let's just make Robin move a little bit. So uh, just as good practice here, I'm just going to add a few comments to make sure. So we're just going to say this is multiple turtles demo. Then we're going to import. And here I'll just say set up the window. And for this block of code, I'll say set up first turtle. Okay, so we've got Robin set up there. And let's just make Robin move a bit. So I'm going to say Robin.forward by 50. And if we run this, now we get Robin and Robin moves forward by 50. Great. Now what I want to do is set up a second turtle. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to say, and I'll make a comment here, set up second turtle. And it turns out that we can use as many turtles as we want. So Robin here is called an instance of the turtle. Uh, so we've made one instance called Robin, and then we can set its attributes. We can use its behavior here. Uh, and we can do that for as many turtles as we want. So if we said Lucy equals turtle dot turtle like that, and just to make it really clear that Lucy is different, let's set a different color. So I'm going to say Lucy.color. Let's go with yellow. And then we'll say Lucy's going to be a turtle as well. So Lucy.shape is the string turtle. Okay, so let's just see how this looks when we give this a run. And there you go. Now you can see that there's Robin. Robin moved forward by 50. And Lucy is sitting here still at the beginning, at the origin, and is a yellow turtle. So just to prove to you that we can do this uh, with multiple turtles, if we were to say, like, Lucy.left by 90 and Lucy.forward by 100, now we should see Lucy taking off up the screen because she turned left first and then moved forward. So there we go, we've got ourselves some multiple turtles. And we can do this, as I say, with as many as we want. What I'm going to get you to do is just think about the basic gist how we did this. So first, we imported the module so that we had turtle available to us. Then we set up the window so we could draw. 
Then we set up whatever turtles we wanted to use, and then we were able to use those turtles to make them move however we want to make them move. Okay, again, inside of the forward function, we said how far to go, and when we called left, or you could use right, you give it the number of degrees to turn. Okay, and just as a reminder again, when we ran this, you'll note that they both were facing to the right or east uh, when you first began. So keep all that in mind, and what I'm going to get you to do is open up your textbook again. And so under this multiple turtles and for loops, I want you to scroll down, and I want you to take a look at these mixed up problems right here. So 10.11. So I'll give you a moment and you can just pause the video here. And I want you to go through and try all these mixed up programs right now. Go for it. Okay. So there were these two mixed up problems. Hopefully you were able to get those figured out. Again, you can hit the check me. The one thing that I didn't mention before, I probably should have before getting you to pause the video, is this exit on click that I have in these. If you're unsure of what that is, I guess I didn't do it in the demo there in Thani, so let's just fix that. If I were to just add in one more thing here and I said, whatever the screen that we called it was, in this case I called it window, so if you were to say window.exitonclick, all that means is that when I run my code, you can click now anywhere on this uh, screen and it's going to disappear. If you didn't have that in here, we give it a run. Now what you should be able to do is you can click on it wherever you like. It's not going to do anything unless I actually click the little X up there. Okay, so that's what this does right there. So if you have that one in the textbook, that's what it's referring to, so this would always be at the very end of your code. Okay, so uh, now that you've got those ones done, let's take a look uh, a little bit at the for loop here. So we've already talked about the for loop in class a few times, but it's worth me just really quickly refreshing your memory that if you have a list, so again, a list is always going to be created with these square brackets. So you could have a square bracket to start and to end it. And then you can put as many elements inside that list as you want. And in between each one, you're just going to put a comma. So this is just a list of a bunch of strings with names. And for each one, we're going to say hi, and then we're just going to add in the name. So again, we said for name in. So it's each time through. The first time through, Joe is going to be what name is. The next time through, we assign Amy to be the name and so forth. So when we run this, you're going to see all of that. Okay, so each time name is just being assigned one of these values. Now, when we want to use that inside of something like our turtle program, and as an aside, I should maybe just mention, if you want, you can assign or access each individual element. So names zero means you'd get the very first element because you start counting at zero. Names square bracket three means you'd access zero, one, two, three, and you'd get to Zoe. But in any case, if we're trying to use iteration in our turtle program, uh, what we're going to do is let's draw ourselves a square and let's use, just do this inside of uh, Thawney. So I'm going to switch back over to Thawney. And here where we had Lucy uh, turned left and moved forward by 100, we're just going to change this up here and we're just going to make her do that four times. So the easiest way to do that is going to be to say for side in range and then inside the brackets put a four because we want to repeat this four times. So we're going to tell Lucy to turn left and move forward four times. And if we run that, we are going to get a square that looks like that. Okay, so again, all we did is we wanted this code to repeat four times. So we used a for loop in order to do that. And again, what this range for is right there, what that does is it's a, just a convenience method that allows you to create a list so this would be 0, 1, 2, 3 if I did list uh, or range 4. So it starts counting at 0 and goes up to but not including that last number, 4, that you made. And so this code here would still run the exact same way. So we'd still get the same thing. Lucy's still going to draw us a square, just like that. And of course, you could put in anything you want. Because we're not using these values, you could call them anything. So. Here, I said side because we're just doing this one per side of the square, but you could call it anything you wanted. If you called this like Frank, everything still works because that's an arbitrary variable. We could call it anything. Uh, but in, in general, you want to use something that means, you know, that's semantically correct in your code. So side makes sense here. And again, these values also don't matter. I could call this whatever, red. Uh, 
in which case everything still works because we're not using that value in any case. All we're doing is we're just iterating through for each one of these. Now, that said, you could use them if you wanted to. So for example, let's say that we called this like, I don't know, uh, green and red and white and uh, purple. Okay, uh, and here, because these are all colors, maybe instead of side, maybe I call this uh, some color. And if I run this, everything should still work the exact same way that it did before, right? Lucy still walks around, turns, and moves four different times. But now, each time that this loop iterates, green is set to be the, the some color the first time through, then red, then white, then purple. So if you wanted to, you could say something like lucy.color is some color. And that means that the first time through our loop, it's going to be green, then some color will be red, then some color white, and then some color purple. Which means that what we'd actually see is something like this. And I realize that's pretty hard to see, so let's just increase Lucy's pen size. So if we said lucy.pensize is 5, we try that again. There we go. So you can see the first one was green, then red, then white, and finally purple. Okay, so that's how you could use a for loop. So you can either specify values like what we did here, or you can use range. Either one of those is just fine. Okay, so let's get back over into our textbook. And I'm going to get you to scroll down again. So I've shown you basically all the, the same logic as what you're seeing here. Uh, and what I'd like you to do is now take a look at this one. So the mixed up programs on 10.31. So pause the video, try these ones, and then come back to the video. Okay, so hopefully all those mixed up problems made sense for you. You can scroll down. If you didn't already do these, check your understandings. Once again, pause the video and try that right now. So make sure you understand these as well. And then once you've got all that done, uh, we've already talked about the range function here, so you should be good to go. So we can jump all the way down to these practice problems here. So just a couple of comments as you get going on this. So the first thing that I'd like you to do uh, is realize that if you wanted to, you could use the Python Turtle documentation. And so I linked to that right here. And I'll just open that in another tab so you can see what's going on. So this is the documentation for Python. And if you scroll down, it starts by giving you a big introduction to the ideas of Turtle. Uh, and if you scroll down, you're going to see this overview of, av of available Turtle and screen methods. And there's lots and lots of them. So you can see all these different ones that we have here. And I've been slowly showing you some of them. We aren't going to use all of them by any stretch. But you could see, for example, uh, there's forward, there's right and left, backward, etc. There's a go-to. There's a ton of different things that we could do here. And as you're doing some of these, you might want to be able to say, well, you know what, how do I do this? And if you click on it, it's going to take you here, and it's going to say, all right, so it is turtle.forward, and it gives you an explanation here and a demo. So it says, well, this is how far you're going to move forward. It can use an integer or a float. Uh, and so if you call turtle.forward, now you wouldn't call turtle, you'd use whatever the name of your turtle is, like Lucy or Robin or whatever. Uh, but you could call turtle.forward by 25 or turtle.forward by like negative 75 and it would move backwards. So you can check out all of these different methods that are available to you. As I say, there's lots of them. Okay, so you might want to uh, take a look at those depending on what it is that you're doing. So give these ones a go right now. So there's this regular polygon where you're trying to get the turtle to draw a regular polygon. Uh, and so read through the instructions there, make sure that you ask the user for the appropriate things, and then draw it. And once you've got that one, see if you can do this draw star. Again, make sure you check, uh, ask the user for these values, and then draw something like this. And finally, you'll want to look in the turtle reference as you do this one. Uh, but try to draw me a clock that looks like this. And instead, you don't want to use like 13 different turtles for this. You want just one turtle object that does this whole thing. So you're going to want to look through the turtle graphics um, reference here and take a look to see, is there some way that I can leave an imprint of where the turtle is? And my hint to you is that in this move and draw thing, one of the methods that's right there, one of the ones that I just highlighted, is what you're going to need in order to leave a, a little mark of where the turtle was. 
Okay, so try all three of those and hopefully you'll be able to get them all figured out.